Hi, Rich here from Digitally Fearless, and I thought I'd do some tutorials on the toolbar. The toolbar is very powerful and gives you so many different options, so I'm going to do a series on that. Some of it is just for beginners, but there are things that even though I've been using it for a while, I never really focused on some of the parts of the toolbar, so I think all of you will find it interesting. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so let's start a new document. We'll say File, New. And it doesn't even matter what size, I'm just choosing Photo. And let's put some things on our document. So let's put, do a shape. Let's see, one of my favorites is the Cog tool. So I'll do a shape there. Um, and we'll give it a fill color. It doesn't really matter. Um, then we'll also do another pixel layer and Let's do a marquee, give that a different color, and, and then we'll fill that. So, and then we'll deselect, control or command D, or you can hit deselect up here on top. So we have a pixel layer, we have a shape layer. Uh, we can also do, say, text. Uh, just let's do any, letters so um, we're going to since we're on the move tool I'll just type move and we'll give it some interesting let's see let's give it something interesting here how about we'll do a brush stroke there and again it does not matter what color so we have different types of things we have a pixel square right here we have a shape you could see in here that's called a cog and that's one of the shapes and we have a move tool so I'm going to duplicate I'm holding alt and I'm going to duplicate these three squares if you have a square a pixel layer and you go to the move tool the first thing you'll see is the enable transform origin and what that means is, and most people know this part, it's not a, but it's, it's important to go over it. Right now, the origin is in the center, and you can't see it. So if you click this, you now see that the origin is in the center. Let me get a close-up of this. Hold on. Okay, so now you see that is the origin point. So if you're rotating this, it will rotate around that point. And if you hit shift, if you hold shift while you rotate, it'll snap as long as you have snapping on too. And so it's important to see that because there might be a time that you may say you want to put this right next to that box. And when you rotate it like that, you may not want that to happen. You may want the rotation to be right on the corner so that it follows that box around, for example, like that. I'll undo that. So that's what the origin point does. So that's simple. Most people know that, and they use it all the time. Uh, let's go to the next one. So I'm going to keep the origin points on. When we go to the next one, the next one says, hide selection while dragging. So right now, as I drag, you can see all the points, and you can see where they're going. But sometimes if you're working, you don't want to see that. You want to see a clear screen. So if I click that, as I'm dragging, I, I don't see any outlines. I don't see any points there. I'm just dragging and looking at exactly what my photo has here right there. And so I can just drag like that. But if I had that off, it would show the dots and everything and maybe I don't want to see the dots so that's what that one is for and then we go to the next one it says show alignment handles this one was a little strange I tried this so here let me let me go out a little let's say I I don't know why we would do this but I'm just couldn't figure out any other reason but let's say we want we, we put a guideline right there when you say show alignment handles, these handles are showing the different points. Like that's showing where the center would be. That's showing where the line is there. So if I grab one, I can move it 
to here, for example. And then it goes exactly there. So, for example, if I want to be on this M, say where this V, the beginning of the V starts, I can grab one of these handles and go right there, and it's perfectly lined with that. I wasn't, I should have gotten closer, but, but I can also do, say I wanted it to be, um, let's say, it's hard to work here because I don't even know what uses. There are some uses for this, I'm sure. But say I wanted that, this dot on the M right here on the bottom, and I want the center of this box to be there at that dot. So I would select that, and here's the center point, and I would go right there so that the dotted line, the guideline is right at the bottom, and then that snaps right into place. So the center of my box is right on that dot. And I'm sure there are reasons for this. I'm, I, the, I, I can think of a few as I'm designing, but I, I don't have them here to show you right now. But I thought that was interesting. So let's turn that one off. And the next one here is transform objects separately. So if I grabbed all of these squares and then tried to sh change the shapes, they all move this like together like that. So now if I just click transform objects separately and then selected them all, it just picks one. And you see how they, they work separately. They didn't all move. How do I explain it? They were each doing their own thing from their own uh, main uh, positions, which was here. So for example, if I went from here, you notice how their left bottom corner stays in the same spot because I'm transforming from the top corner like that, which is, and they can cross into each other, which if I did not have that on, let's try it again. If I did not have that on, they would never cross into each other and their, their corner points keep moving, but they'll always stay separated. So that's what transform objects separately is. Now let's do cycle selection box. When I have something selected, if I click this, it says regular, and then it says base. So let's say it says base, and I rotate it. Now I still can continue with the size just exactly the way it was, right? But if I click this again, it's no longer base. That's base. It's regular. So now I'm stretching from the new position which is very different than what it was from the old position because now I can snap back and continue with the old position, which is a great feature. So you have to decide which way you want to use it, but it's really could be interesting. Like there, I can just say, now, now that I've turned this around, now I want this to be even with that, for example. So I thought that was cool. So the last thing, we need to do is there's another box here but it's not showing up now and the reason it's not showing up here is because uh, these are pixel objects as opposed to curves or letters so let's do curves first as you know shape tools have all their own things for example in this particular one you could change the teeth or you could change the hole like that and I'm just, everyone has their own feature. But sometimes you want to do more with this. And here's where Convert to Curves comes in. So now that, since you now, it doesn't matter which shape tool, you'll always see a Convert to Curves. Now, if you convert it to Curves and now go to the Node tool, oops, it's under the Pen tool right here, you can now do anything with it. For example, I could stretch this out like that and make it something completely different than what it was meant to be. I can take that, I can move that out, I can move this out, I can move that out. So uh, you you know, it's no longer a shape. It's now a curve and it says so in the layer. So that gives you some great features. Now let's see what it can do with text. Here's text right here. And I did a, a whole tutorial on this that you can create your own fun 
interesting looks with fonts. So if you, again, if you're on that node tool, it does nothing on text because text is just text. So you can see that this letter A is in the layer. That means it's text. But if you select that now with the move tool and click convert to curves, a group forms. And in that group is all these letters. And each letter, if you click the node tool now, can be adjusted any way you want it to be. So that's pretty cool. So if you wanted this font to be something really strange like this, it's no longer a font, it's now a shape or a curve, I should say. So that covers the toolbar when you select Move. I'll be doing other tutorials on other selections in the toolbar. So if you like this tutorial and want me to continue in this series, please click like and subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.